Hey dudes and dudettes, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Now I am so excited and ready for this one. Today I'm going to go through and DM some of my favorite card makers and see what their response is to help finish off and choose the supplies and techniques for my cards. I thought this was such a fun idea. It's been a trend that's been going around YouTube in the beauty industry and I wanted to bring it to our awesome card making industry. I'm going to share the responses I got first and then I'll dive into the card so we can have our stamp set chosen, the color scheme chosen, and the technique for today's challenge. So first I DM'd Kathy Zilski and I asked her which of these three stamp sets were her favorite. So we have Puppy Puns, Flower Picking Friends, and the new Road Trip stamp set. And I asked which one she wanted me to start off with. I said, hey Kathy, I'm filming a video right now. Because of her awesome new, um, new Stamp Now What series, I wanted her to choose my stamp set. And she said, oh my, all would be so cute, but the dogs would be my choice. Which is so exciting. Thank you for your awesome input, Kathy. And I cannot wait to use the dogs in my project. Now, Kathy has a really awesome YouTube channel and a really great series going on right now called New Stamp Now What, where she shows you what to do with the new stamp set. So I thought she'd be the perfect one to pick my stamps out. Then I reached out to Gina Kay for a color scheme. I said, hey, what are four of some of your favorite colors um, to use for card making? And Gina said, I love coral, teal, gray, and aqua. Or you could replace teal with sand. So I pulled out some of these colors from my line. We have traffic cone, which is kind of that corally, orangish color. Uh, I picked out remember me and clear skies, as well as tropical tango. And these could kind of go as aquas and teals. And then I grabbed over the moon for sand, but I think we'll go with Gina's amalgam ink. This one's called warm glow if we're using that sand color. And then I did woof too. So this is a really awesome color palette, very Gina K, and I cannot wait to create with it. Gina K is so awesome. Be sure to check out her YouTube channel too. I'll have everybody linked down below that I share in today's video. She does some really great live streams right now and sharing lots of different techniques it has been such an awesome inspiration during this crazy time in the world. So be sure to check her out. And you know, you probably already know all these card makers, but I'll link them all down below. Now for the technique for my card, I think we all know who I reached out to. Jennifer McGuire has been so amazing and inspiring with techniques. She was actually the person who got me into card making, and I love how innovative she is with all of her techniques. So I reached out and said, hey, since you're so awesome with techniques, could you recommend an inky technique or a fun fold card? And she said, of course, do you have circle dies? I said, yes. Um, and then she sent me this amazing video of her doing these ornament cards, and it's a really great fun fold, gate fold card. So I'll link that video down below so you can check it out after you watch this one. I'm sure Jennifer McGuire will explain it in a lot more and a lot better detail. So thank you so much, Jennifer, for helping me out. I cannot wait to try this technique. I definitely watched the video several times before filming this, but I think I got the hang of it. All right, so let's start off with Jennifer's technique. So I'm going to take my piece of cardstock. I've got my notes off to the side, and I'm going to cut my cardstock at five and a half by eight and a half. So this is just right in half like a regular A2 size card would be. And then once we have this cut, I'm gonna go in with my scoring tool and it says score at two and one eighth inches. So I'm gonna do this going in from both sides, flip that cardstock, and same on this end. And then I'll go in and score these down. Onto my cardstock and that is perfect, it creates this great gatefold card template for us to use. Okay, so I've got a piece of Gina K cardstock and I've cut this down um, in two different flaps and I've taped it together with some adhesive on the back because these are going to just go on top of this gatefold card and line up there. So I just cut it down to fit on top of there and I'm going to use my School Scribbles background stamp with a little bit of Remember Me to stick along with Gina's color scheme. So this is gonna give kind of a cool tone on tone darker look. And I just want a little bit of texture in the background. So these puppies have kind of this fun background behind them. Then I'll flip this over and place it down. Give it some good pressure. And then I'll lift it off. And look at that fun background. All right, so then I'll go in here and adhere these pieces down and they line up right in the center of the card. And this has nothing to do really with the gatefold. It just creates a really nice decoration on top of both of those flaps. But of course you could do it right down onto the cardstock. I just really like how that border looks around it. 
Okay, so for the next part, for the fun fold, you're going to need two die cut shapes. And I'm sure you could cut out these shapes too if you were just using a larger stamped image. You could probably cut around it twice and get that same image. But I'm gonna go in with this classic heart layering die set and I've cut two pieces out. And one of them I'm going to stamp my images on and then one of them I'm gonna stamp my sentiment on. Okay, so then I'm gonna go in with the dog stamp set that Kathy chose for me. Okay, I'm gonna stamp this little guy down and this one looks like Jennifer McGuire's Vistla, so that's why we're using that. And then you can stamp other things like the little paws from the set can be right below them so it looks like they're peeking out. And you can make them kind of stick out above a sentiment or I have a little window stencil you can make them sit above. Then I'm gonna go in with a couple of my ink pads and we're gonna do a little bit of water coloring with these guys. So once I've got kind of a light wash of color there, I can go into kind of the darker puddles and add in a little bit of shading to that color and just go in with a little bit more water and kind of blend it out. And you can keep doing that if you want to add shading or you could just skip this all together and keep that nice light wash of color going. And again, you can really quickly go in and do this. I just do it super quick. There's no real method to my madness. I just lay down kind of a light wash of color and then like I said, kind of go in with a little bit more and add just a bit of shading into there. And then, sticking with the same color palette, we'll go in and add some of those colors that Gina recommended. So we're bringing in some of that coral kind of color and a little bit of aqua. Okay, so I wanna add a little bit of kind of light blending and shading around here. And so Gina recommended to use kind of a corally color. And my traffic cone is kind of a coral color, but I wanna make it a little bit more pink. So I'm gonna go in with both rosy cheeks and traffic cone on one of my blender brushes. I recently did a video on these blender brushes and I'll link it in the top corner here where I kind of tested them out. And I found they were best for like light blends of color, but it'll also be nice for this since it's not saturated with one color that we can kind of create a new blend of colors on here, which I think is pretty cool. So I'll go in if I want a little bit more orange and go in here and just do a really super light blend of color. I love how that's looking. Super cool. And then you can totally kind of do this with just a light blending tool. It's not like you're really contaminating your colors. Oh my gosh, I love how this is turning out. It's a super cool color combination since um, the teals and kind of aquas will complement this nice kind of orangey pink color. And I'll even go in here in the center and just do a super light blend of color there. And I love how that fills in the space pretty easily. Now I'm gonna stamp a little sentiment on the other heart that says, don't let the paparazzi stop you. And this will all make sense when we start putting the card together, but I just want the sentiment stamped down and this inside heart to be all finished so that you guys can see it in action. And with whatever is left over on my brushes, I'm just gonna go in here and quickly, really lightly blend around that color. I don't want a super dark blend because I don't want to distract from it. But I also don't want it to be stark white because nothing else on the card really is. Right, and you can see that really faint wash of color. That's why I like these. Otherwise, I'd go for the foam if I wanted a really dark color, but that light blend is really easy to do. All right, guys, so this is where the real Jennifer McGuire engineering part of the technique comes in, which I think is really cool. So I'm gonna go in here and cut about an inch of my cardstock off. And this kind of all depends on how big your die cuts are. You just need it to be something you can hide behind your die cut. So this is perfect. Then I'll go in and score both of these at the half inch mark. So I'll go on this side, score it a half inch in, and then we'll give these a good crease. Then I'm going in and cutting these down. And basically, the reason why we cut it out of such a large cardstock is so that we can get this scored easily, but it's half inch, a score mark, and then another half inch to create these little makeshift hinges, which I think is really cool. Okay, so I've added a little bit of score tape, which is just a really strong adhesive, and then I'm going to place this hinge down, and we want it to meet in the center with the other hinge. And this is important, the folded part should be going in, so this flap is going to be sticking outward, I'm just trying to make this as easy as possible for you guys to understand along with me. So then I'm going to peel off this side and do the exact same thing. Meeting each other right in the center there with the little flap sticking outward like this. Okay, so then I've added a little bit more adhesive on here and I'm going to start off with 
my puppies, which are going to go on the outside of the card, and I've ripped off the adhesive there, and I'm just going to line this up in the center of my card where I want it, and I'll press it down so that that hinge kind of grabs hold of it, and that is what I'm going to use to pull this side of my card. And then I'm going to go in and peel off this tape on the inside of this hinge. Oh gosh. And then I'm going to grab my sentiment heart, and I want these two to line up exactly. So what I'm going to do is go in, place that on there, make sure this hinge has the adhesive ready, make sure it's all lined up, and then I'll go in and press this down. And again, we're gonna make sure that it grabs hold on top of there, and this should create a really fun gatefold card. So this is how the outside of our gatefold looks, and when you pull on these two hearts, you have the inside of the card, oh my gosh, we've actually done it, guys. I am surprised that I did this, but I think it looks so cool. Jennifer, you're a genius. <laughs> Okay, so I've just adhered the sentiment that I've heat embossed on the outside heart. So the cool part about that is you could totally have things hanging over your image on the outside because it's not going to affect it. But I just love this super cool hinge design that Jennifer came up with. She did it with some really awesome ornament dies, and I'll be sure to link her video down below so you can check it out after this one. And mine is the kind of fun and playful kids version of this, but I'm sure it's gonna make someone smile, and the cool mechanism in it was so much fun to create today. So thank you so much, Jennifer, for that idea. And thank you to Kathy and Gina as well for sharing their awesome expertise with the stamp set and ink colors. I think this card came out really fun, and it's always cool to have different opinions with different people's styles. So if you wanna try this at home, go up to your friend and members and ask them which products you should use as you're creating your card and you could definitely come up with something super cool in the end. Be sure to leave a comment down below what you think of today's card and be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below to never miss more crafting videos like this one from me. Alright guys, I'll see you very very soon in another card making video. Have a wonderful day. Bye!